It's new bike day for the first time in nearly 10 years. Shock! Horror! It's a gravel bike. A Steel is Real Ribble CGR725. A la mode in terms of function and classic in terms of frame material. And I'm making the most of the occasion with this video, in which I'll kick off with an introduction to the bike, give my TED talk on why I wanted a Ribble, run through the specs, and then shout out a very high level assessment of what it's like to ride, all the jazzled with my sparkling repartee, which is quite the image, so let's begin. The bike. This is the Ribble CGR725. The 725 denotes the steel frame version. You can also get the CGR in carbon, titanium, and aluminium. Aluminum. In my totally correct opinion, the 725 and titanium frame shapes look great. The aluminium and carbon versions not so. I'm not a fan of the kinky seat stays, which I guess are shaped like that to provide a more compliant ride given their differing material qualities. The 725 actually refers to the type of steel tubing used, Reynolds 725. I'll stop there to avoid overwhelming you with my frame building knowledge. The CGR stands for Cross Gravel Road. The Ribble CGR was right at the forefront of what nobody at all calls the gravel revolution. I hypothecate that Ribble didn't have the confidence that early gravel grumblings would turn into the wallet emptying pseudo religion we see now. So it hedged its bets with a name that tried to tickle all three testicles. Basically, the Ribble CGR is a sturdy road bike with disc brakes and clearance to fit nice grobbly tyres. A riding on pothole Derbyshire roads in the winter bike. Which is what I wanted for a long time. A brief history of wanting a Ribble winter bike. I've hankered for ages like 14 years ages. Back in the late noughties, we lived in South East London. A guy living opposite had a titanium road bike, the first I'd seen with fancy wheels. I was impressed. His second bike, maybe his third, was the old blue aluminium Ribble winter bike, which he actually had a child seat attached to. I continued to be impressed. My trusty doors road bike, whilst not ideally suited to London potholes, just about did the job when I needed to commute or ride out to the countryside. Whilst tempted by a new ribble, a nibble, I couldn't justify another velo. The winter bike idea got shelved. I was dangling at the end of Ribble's long fishing line though. Every few months, I'd fiddle around in the bike builder section of their website, specking up an imaginary purchase with different gears and wheels. When the original CGR came out, my desire loins started glowing. It was clearly a winter bike, but one dressed up in marketing gravel spiel to make it seem a little cooler. It was a lurid yellow puke colour though, so my pubic pulsations were kept in check. When the updated version of the CGR was released, including the steel one with the classic navy blue and orange colour scheme, my loins went into back and Turner Overdrive. Then I waited a further five years and only bought the bike when it went on sale, proving that my Yorkshire bred wallet control is a stronger force than my loinal lusting. The specs. We've already mentioned that I bought the steel frame CGR. I went for the bottom of the range version in terms of specs. I did very little twerking. I may have swapped out the standard flared handlebars for narrowish road ones and opted for a slightly shorter stem but that's about it. The bike has a SRAM Apex one by group set with a single 42 tooth chainring at the front and an 11 speed 1142 tooth cassette at the back. I'm a spinner, not a grinder, a lover, not a fighter, but the easiest gear has a one to one ratio, which is actually lower than the, oh my God, there are no more gears gear on my road bike. At the upper reaches, I am able to spin out, yes, even with these disco legs. So if this was my only bike, I'd probably go for one with a two by chain set option. But as it isn't, I didn't. In terms of wheels, this CGR variant comes with Mavic Axiom DCL 19s, which do a better job of being bomb proof than being lightweight. For my pothole use case, that's the right way round. As standard, the wheels came sheathed in WTB Riddler gravel tires, as I discovered, and as I proved behind, they're quite happy cross-dressing in Continental GP5000 road tires. Other tires are available. The rest, 
brakes, shifter, dingly bell are all SRAM Apex, along with SRAM disc brakes. So a nice consistent group set across the bike. At this point, I should say that Ribble doesn't do a SRAM Apex version of the CGR anymore. The lowest spec steel frame CGR now comes adorned with Shimano Tiagra. But at the start of 2023, with SRAM looking to clear stock ahead of an impending Apex refresh, there were clearly deals to be done. A spark reignited the hibernating rodent in my pants. The price of the CGR 725 fell to a level that even this deep-pocketed, short-armed Yorkshireman could not ignore. And that price? 1,199 English pounds, which is good smack for a proper Grode Venture bike. Buying the bike. The buying experience from Ribble gets a 6 out of 10. The first part was excellent. It was a couple of days after Christmas when, like an agitated sparrowhawk, I espied the deal on the interhighweb. I circled the deal like an aroused bull shark. Then I had a video call with a Ribble sales guy, like a flaccid hybrid office employee. Not a simile. We mainly discussed frame size. The chap explained that I could order online at that point to lock in the price, then follow up with a visit to my local-ish showroom to check the sizing and dial in, as they say, some of the accoutrements, as they don't say. Stem length, crank length, number of spoky dokies. At the showroom visit, as well as checking frame size and handlebar width, I got some helpful advice on setting up the bike and also made my son take a slow-mo video of me on the jig. Then it all got a bit painful. Delivery was delayed, partly due, as it turned out, to the different handlebars I'd ordered being out of stock. It took some effort, mine and quite a few weeks to find this out. Anyway, the CGR arrived eventually, the frame and all components were present and correct and in full working order. A bit of light assembly on my part and I was the erect owner of a new gravel bike. But enough chuff waffle. What is the Ribble CGR like to ride? Important disclaimer time, I'm not a bike reviewer. I know nothing, but then you knew that. Is that racist? My immediate impression was that the CGR is fun to ride and that impression remains six months later. It's responsive and as far as an incompetent can judge these things, connected to the road. How could it be otherwise? It's not an anti-gravity bike. The Riddler gravel flavoured tyres are quite fast rolling on roads. So fast rolling in fact that I was fooled into thinking I was easily keeping up with Mammal Pals on full road setups. I easily kept up until I blew up and realised how much extra work the tyres had me doing. I was fooled, I think, because I translated the smooth ride into the CGR being a magic carpet bike. May or may not be a term. One that is both fast and supremely comfortable. Sure, it's fast, but only, to quote Twain, Shania, when I'm blowing out of my arse. I've since switched to GP5000 road tyres. Being narrower and higher pressure, these do give a firmer ride. But sheathed in less knobbly rubber, I can, again like Shania, go harder with less effort, which I hope isn't libelous. The CGR feels solidly built. Whence riding, there's no shake, rattle, or indeed roll. I'm no particular judge, at all, but the quality seems high, the frame welds are neat, the paintwork was immaculate. Talking of which, the bike overall looks great, particularly with the bigger tan wall gravel tyres. Actually, I'm underplaying it. To my decidedly middle of the road aesthetic persuasions, it looks fantastic. Other opinions are available, none of them are correct. I've enjoyed the one by setup, my first time swinging that way. I like that it only requires one hand and you can't cross gear. It may be SRAM's bottom of the range variant and the older generation at that, but I am a big fan. We're drifting off topic though. The group set is not unique to this bike. So instead, let's discuss the future plans for my Ribble CGR. When I bought the bike, I half planned to buy some super duper road wheels and then revert the Mavics back to the original gravel Riddlers. Griddlers. Then I could swap quickly between the two wheel sets, depending on my desires of the day. But I've got other pure road bike options. Well, one other option, so I've decided to keep the CGR set up for gravel and crap roads. Henceforth, it will be my winter beast, 
also the name for my penis. There's a video coming soon on my decision to repoint my whole bike portfolio not a term, so stand by for that one. I've not mentioned all the points where racks, panniers and other velo luggage can be attached to the bike. Unlike its owner, the CGR is well endowed. I imagine it will be a practical choice for touring and bike packing, neither of which I've ever done. If and when I do, it'll be the CGR that I use for these adventures and I can report back then on carrying capacity and multi-day riding comfort. Final thoughts. I really like this bike. It does exactly what I wanted. It handles the shithole roads where I live with a plum. It looks good, particularly in the steel variant. The CGR is a well-priced bike anyway, but at the price I paid, it was a bargain. Before I got it, I did think that the CGR would be my ultimate quiver killer, my one bike to rule them all, but it isn't. It may tick the gravel adventure box, but at least in the steel frame variant, it's not going to be a lightweight road bike, even if I swap in a set of feather light -like wheels. I can and do use the CGR as a regular road bike, riding with my local mammal gang, but I still see the need for a probably carbon super race bike. Hiring a BMC T machine with electronic gears on a recent Tour de France themed trip to the Alps did not cool my excitement jets. While I wait to score big on crypto, I'll focus on upgrading my Trek domain. So the only cast iron conclusion to draw from watching this review, let's suspend belief and call it that, is that the N plus one problem is real and affects even the best of us. Me. Peace out. Happy cycling.